little sunshine today helped melt some of the snow off the roads, but now we settle into a bitterly cold night tonight. Meteorologist Greg Press is keeping an eye on things out there. Hey guys, yeah, we are in for a brutally cold night tonight. As you both said, temperatures dropping back down into the lower single digits. Earlier, we were hoping that would hit 9, 10 degrees, but things have since uh, uh, trended even a, a little bit colder than that. We're looking at 4 degrees as our low temperature overnight. This is all under mostly clear to partly cloudy skies, making it even colder, of course. HD Doppler radar showing just that, and maybe a few flurries down towards Colorado Springs. Otherwise, we are going to be completely dry. Dangerously cold conditions right now. 8 degrees outside in the metro region. Lyman at around 7 degrees. Colorado Springs in the middle to lower teens. Look at Leadville though. 1 degree Fahrenheit and there we go. Our low temperature at around 4 degrees all under mostly clear to partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow waking up to plenty of sunshine. The skies are expected to remain clear. Here's what we need to know moving forward though. Bitterly cold for tonight, but a touch more mild tomorrow and even warmer next week. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I'll talk about the details coming up in my full forecast. Thank you, Greg. Both Denver and Boulder are now making more room for people if they need to find shelter overnight. The Carla Madison Rec Center on East Colfax has increased their overnight capacity tonight. So has the Boulder Shelter for the Homeless. Colorado continues to welcome Afghans to our state, coming here to escape Taliban rule in their home country. Nine News reporter Luis DeLeon shows us how a group here is helping to empower refugees as they start new lives in our state. Every thread is sewn carefully. It's this art. Uh, this is the bags. That helps Arhun Hamzole's family to try to move forward. One of my sister-in-law, she met it. His wife and sister, who did not feel comfortable going on camera, made these fabrics. Yeah, I am proud because it's like, she doing hard work to make this. I proud here. Hamzole is from Afghanistan. For years, he worked with the U.S. military as a mechanic. He came to Colorado in early 2020. And over the last year, more of his family members have finally been able to make it over too. Yeah, I will save her and especially for life or my kids' education. Carefully crafting these colorful fabrics, he says, have helped his wife and his sister. And so has Beth Fine Silver. There's so much stuff, it's unbelievable. She's creative director for the Afghan Women's Collective of Denver, which started last year. Some of the families got out with only the clothes on their back and were dropped into this culture that is just totally different than theirs. She and volunteers have helped the Afghan women who resettled here to use their sewing skills to support their family. To do something on their own, to make their own money, to be proud of something they created. After two sales this year, they nearly sold everything. I think they're very proud of what they're doing. But to Beth and Sarhun, it's about resiliency. This is a way people will see and they will start supporting them. For Nine News, I'm Luis De Leon. The fabrics you saw there will be sold at the community Cel Celebration Community Church in Denver tomorrow from 10 until 3. Two more teenagers are now facing charges for two violent assaults on the RTDW line. They appeared in court today. In total, that's now nine teenagers, all between the ages of 15 and 17. They've been arrested for two attacks last month. Seven of the boys were arrested at Longview High School and accused of beating up passengers just at random. One attack was caught on camera. It spilled onto the platform at West 13th Avenue in Garrison. The other attack left a man with 11 facial fractures. Police say there have been 14 reported assaults on the W line since July. The relief for families that Denver Public Schools won't be closing school buildings after all may end up being short lived because the district point out today the reason for the proposed closures is still a problem. We're already forecasted to be 23 and a half million under budget next year. That's a tremendous amount of money. So one school saved last night is Denver Discovery School. Superintendent Dr. Alex Marrero says even though it was saved by the board's no vote, it's unlikely the school will remain open next year. If the board continues to vote down school closures, the district leadership has the option to do what's called an operational closure. The superintendent and administrators could close the school without the board's vote. Dr. Marrero said the district has budget meetings in January, and that's when they'll really have a better idea of their plans for next year. 
In Adams County, families rallied this afternoon, pushing back against the state's mandate that Adams 14 has to reorganize, which means they could dissolve or combine with another nearby district. The state made that decision back in May. Adams 14 briefly lost accreditation this year after the district has struggled for a decade with low academic performance. Now the district has to partner with other school districts nearby serving Adams County to figure out what is the best plan moving forward. Reorganization can include consolidating with another district, having other districts absorb certain schools or dissolving the district completely. Educators and families are fighting to keep the district intact. We know what we need um, and a lot of it we need support in doing that. Um, we don't really need a lot of people to tell us how to do it. It's more or less can you support us in the vision we have. Adams 14 is a predominantly Hispanic district and today families said they felt like they've been targeted for their race and that the state's accountability is not equitable for their bilingual students. The Adams 14 Reorganization Committee met for the first time this week. Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert has won a second term. It's a shocker that her race was so close in such a heavily Republican district. Her Democratic opponent Adam Frisch conceded today even before an automatic recount. It's a pinch me moment at each time that you're sent to Congress where only 12,500 people approximately in the history of the United States have been elected to serve in Congress. So it's certainly a huge honor that I don't take lightly. I just don't want to give false hope to people and I don't want to collect false money and I don't want other people to collect false money off the back of our very close race and how hard we worked. Um, and so that's why I decided to offer a concession conversation Yesterday, Frisch filed paperwork to run for the same office in 2024. He told us he's not sure he'll run again. He said the filing is essentially a paperwork situation, allows him to continue to accept donations if people want to give to him in the case of a legal fight over the recount. So Nine News has been on the air for 70 years. And as we celebrate that milestone, Arnold Brennan has been digging into our archives. He was curious to see the stories captured on 16 millimeter film. So he digitized a few reels and a story he never expected to tell. That's a lot of boxes. History has a way of rubbing off on us. Oh, these are so dusty. Looks like snow in a park. A reporter learns that. Holy cow. Digging for reels of 16 millimeter film unseen for decades in the Nine News archives. The coolest find for me is July 21st, 1969, the day after the lunar landing. I also learn searching for something old. And I'm really excited to see what's on this. Can reveal something new. Who is this woman? The most captivating moment on this old film reel is not a man on the moon. Getting lots of hugs. But a young woman in the airport. There's like a crowd of people waiting for her. But who is she? I turned to Twitter. So this is what I posted. To solve this mystery of Nine News history. The camera follows a young woman arriving at the airport carrying Snoopy and an Adidas bag. She's greeted with hugs and smiling faces. Who is she? It's Pam Green, they say. At 15, the track star at Manuel High School was competing on the world stage. At 18, she became the first Denver woman to make an Olympic team. She ran the 200 meters in the 1972 games in Munich. All right, so I'm sharing my screen. Can you see an image? Yes, I do see an image. 53 years since this day at Stapleton Airport. Oh, wow. What a great reception. Denon Green tells me all about Pam. You're always going to have history of who you were before, you know, years ago. Everybody does. He knows that 15-year-old better than anyone. Even then, at an early age, I knew that I was, you know, different from the perspective of my gender. Denon transitioned about a decade ago. It's like more than, you know, turning the book to another chapter. It was more of like completely starting a new life again. Life back then was all track and field. My outlet was running. When I competed, I competed in the 100, the 200, the 400 uh, relays. He set records at Manual and at Colorado State University, where he was inducted into the Athletics Hall of Fame. In the 72 Olympics, when I came back, they had dedicated a month to me as Pam Green Month <laughs> in Denver. So uh, pretty, pretty fantastic, yeah. Fantastic and a little overwhelming for a teenager. That little 15 year old at the airport, um, that was really kind of the beginning of like a springboard to to become who I am. Years later, Denon wants to share who he is. The book is called The Trans Being Experience. 
it's a awakening of uh, who you are authentically. I have a lot of my my personal experience in it uh, that I disclose, which is pretty interesting. And it's like, oh, you're gonna really write about that? <sighs> yeah, I am. <laughs> He hopes others can learn from history he lived. Amazing things can happen in your life. You just have to, you know, keep going up through the ups and downs, get up when you, you know, stumble, and just, you know, keep your eye on that finish line. A lesson unraveled in life and on a reel of 16 millimeter film. We were digging for old stories and trying to revisit old stories, but we found a new one, and I think that's what the coolest thing about this is. Yeah, it's just amazing, a blessing. Noel Brennan reporting. Denon now lives in the Los Angeles area. He's hoping to release his book sometime early next year. So I thought yesterday was pretty snowy. At least Broncos aren't playing in something like this on Sunday. <laughs>